This is Road to the Golden Door, where we unpack the proven success formula straight from the minds of Golden Door winners, uncovering the motivation, methods, and the mindset it takes to become an elite performer in door-to-door -door sales and in life. This is Road to the Golden Door. Now, here's your host, Mikey Lucas. Welcome back to Road to the Golden Door. I've got uh, my boy Jake Zimmer here on the podcast. Looking forward to it, Jake. You are uh, you are you are a diamond in a rough. First off, uh, I, I saw you on stage years ago at the Roar Conference, getting a multi—I uh, don't even know how to say it—but a multi-service Golden Door. And I think last year, 2021. Uh, rather this year, I guess, uh, in 2021, somebody got it. I don't think that it was necessarily verified. So I think you are still the only reigning champion of having a multi-service golden freaking door, dude. So I'm excited, bro. Uh, I've been following you for a while now and love your story. Um, I love to see your growth. Uh, and I know that you have a lot, a lot to add uh, value to our listeners today. So um, Jake, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. It's an honor. Uh, grateful to be here. Yeah, man. So cool. Um, so everybody that doesn't know Jake, um, why don't you why don't you start with your story, man? Just uh, give us uh, you know the overview of, of of who you are, you know what's important to you, and, and where you're at today. Yeah. Uh, so grew up in Utah, uh, Spanish Fork. Uh, moved around a lot. Had uh, really did never consider myself an extrovert. And moving around, I always had to talk to some people. Like, hey, who, who are you? The new guy, right? So. I feel like that kind of forced me into, um, I really forced it just kind of, you evolve right over time and, and you grow and, you know, the person I was in, you know, 10 years ago, isn't this, you know, grown a ton in that, in that same time. Um, but I grew up in Utah, um, me and wife, um, grew up together in Spanish Fork, uh, reconnected on Facebook after she'd been out in California for uh, a couple of years because her dad uh, was a traveling nurse and just been, I guess, talking for 10 years and. Uh, a couple years before I went on a mission, you grew up in um, Saratoga Springs, Utah, uh, really just mowing lawns and we cut grass and got into curb spray painting. Uh, didn't really never saw it as like a door to door. It was just something that I could go out and make more than what I was making at my, you know, eight fifty an hour job at a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> so that, that was good back then. Eight yeah. fifty. Yeah. I got I, like well, six twenty five. <laughs> yeah, and I was working like two jobs too. I was going in between. I was like, I tried to get more hours at the one that I was making a little bit more at. So it right, just kind of right. turned into my dad told me, hey, like you got to, if you want to play all these sports, um, you got to earn the money for it and, you know, help out if, if needed. And he's, you know, I grew up in this police officer out in Utah, um, working at state prison now. And he's retired, but I'm still I'm doing what I can to help him re actually retire because he's still working. So, um, but grateful for everything that, you know, all the mentors and people along the way that have helped me and, you know, I've, uh, tried to emulate and, you know, my dad told me to go or make the money for it, put me in a position to really make what I like, as I developed and got better, you, you know, the more value you bring to the marketplace in the world, the more value you receive. Right. So I think bigger okay. thing for me, it's always been a driving force is the more, you help others, the more you get. And so that's been a big yeah. driving force in my life. And um, there's times where you get, you know, roadblocks and things that you have to, where you have to pivot, um, you know, and that's where those breakthroughs come from. But those, those pivot points are what I think, um, whether good or bad, you know, you pivot back to where you need to be and, and I don't know your path to growth, but uh, broke my back playing football senior year, um, play football, basketball, track, rugby, and, that was, it sucked. It was like the uh, doctor telling me no more sports and had to refocus, had to re, you know, pivot point and, you know, had to refocus on other things and um, ended up being for the better. You know, I'm grateful for, you know, God works in mysterious ways and uh, led me to go to the college I went to. And that's where I found this job, this job 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago now. So um, couldn't be more grateful for that. I, my back's been pretty good i haven't really had any issues with it uh, i had i was in a good surf for a little bit and then back brace and um didn't have to get surgery but healed up from that and ended up playing uh, rugby all through college so awesome wow um 
broke your right. back and still been playing rugby. Yeah. So it's not as there, you get more like bone injuries in football, whereas rugby, you get like broken nose, you know, cuts, bruits, bruises, scrapes, all that. So, sure. um, but had, um, one of our coaches actually played in the Olympics. So I think we had an unfair advantage playing the other teams we did. I think our high school team that we started went like undefeated for like six years. It's pretty cool. So after wow. I had graduated. So, wow, that's awesome. um, but where I'm at now, you know, uh, fast, you know, I guess we went back 10 years ago, we were doing TV, internet, cell phones, uh, mainly like direct TV back in the day and, um, moved from that space. I had you know, a lot of great mentors that really put the mindset of, you know, whatever you're doing, be a good one. And that was something that coach Gellix over at Highland talked about where, um, for rugby, where he, um, you know, whatever you do, just be the best at it. Right. And so I always had a chip on my shoulder with, you know, and a lot of whatever that is for people, you know, golden door, whatever, like whatever that is, there's, there's always something, little, you know, that pushes you to motivate you. And I think, uh, it's something simple, but also my last name being Zimmer. So the Z, I was always the last one to get the lunch and always had a kind of a chip on my shoulder with that. But, um, never felt like I was the most, you know, I guess athletic or, you know, was never most outgoing, but moving in different places growing up, it really helped me, op- you know, I guess open up more. And I really, um, you know, those football cards you sell to, you know, different discounts in places. Um, I don't know if anyone sold more than I have at the high school, but 1600 of them, um, to help get us a new school, like gym and stuff. And I really just, I'd go work in areas that found out golfers really liked them because they get buy one, get one 18 holes. And uh, so I'd go look at houses that had golf, their garage doors open on a golf course that you could see clubs. <laughs> so I just go take advantage of that. But I think wow. the biggest joy I got was when we had a competition for those cards um, that I got to, basically I needed to expand and I needed to, and to scale. And I was training other guys what to do, what, like do what I did. And for them to see that success where they had sold, you know, one card to their mom, you know, uh, for them to go sell five of those little cards, you know, making some, I think you had to go to school 10 bucks, but you could sell them for 20. So it was like for him to go sell more than he ever did. It gave him a lot of confidence. And over the years, that's been a big thing for me is like helping others uh, grow. And that's what the mentors in my company, when I first started, um, one of the owners that brought me onto the company, talk about being the best, right? It's like being whatever you are, be like the, you know, a doctor of it. And that comes, there comes that 10,000 hours. Right. And so for me, that really, and he helped instill in me the, like, where he was at. It's like, all right, that's what he did to get to that point. I need to go do, be doing the things that those other people are doing, right? So if I do the same thing that other people are doing, like, at a high level, there, I've always believed there's only 1% difference between the things that the top 1% are doing and the bottom 99. There's only 1% difference that they're saying that they're doing. Those are just little habits. We see that they're, quote, unquote, disciplined. But really, they're just really good at the little things. Uh, one of the books I love is Atomic Habits, James Clear. I had that in my library on Audible for like two, three months, and I didn't get to it. And then when I read it, I'm like, geez, I wish I had read this when I, when I got it. Uh, right now, on that path, you know, uh, to grow, to read, try to read a book a week. Um, and I've been doing that since. So every year, I've been averaging about 65 to 70 books a year is what I end up pacing for by the end of the year. So uh, I'm book 46 right now. I think it's week 40 one for the year so Mm -hmm. awesome dude yeah thank you for sharing that that's awesome um i i'm a yeah big advocate reader as well um i would love to jam with you on some books that you've read and what what's next or you know obviously we we have those you know top five top ten books um one of my mentors dave allred i don't know if you know him or not but uh dave allred you know he he gave me a list of like a hundred books I don't know, six or seven years ago. And I read every single one of them. And then he told, he told me to do, he said, Hey, write down two or three things you're going to get from each book. Cause that's really ultimately all you're going to remember anyway. So I sent him all those and he was just like, wait, what? And that's what I got. Read it? <laughs> yeah. And I, and I did what he said to do, um, which is like that, that 1%, 1%, that 1% thing. Right. And, uh, that's when he started mentoring me after that, you know, he helped, he helped guide me and started my first fund. Um, you know, he's got a real estate fund called Axia and, and, uh, you know, I did any, anything Dave Allred did. I was just like, bro, wait, what you have a 9,000 square foot house. That's like 2000 square feet per child that you have during COVID. Like, what? 
<laughs> so, uh, and he's just an awesome dude. So yeah, I, uh, I think the, uh, atomic habits is a great book. Have you read the one thing? I'm sure you have, right? Yeah. Yeah. In my one, thing or or a no, one thing or one thing. And then, Oh, wh- one, one more. I think that's, yeah. Pa- the pa- power of one oh, more, but have you, yeah. have you read, uh, the one, the one thing? Yep. Yeah. And then I know if I, we read so many books, like, yeah, uh, wait, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a, I, I tried, I do a lot of audible since we moved a lot every summer. I've been in yeah, yeah. program since 2017 in Oklahoma city. Yeah. I just open a market. I got a little stack of books. Just that's right. Table over here. <laughs> great, great, so. great book. Relent, relentless right there. Great book. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And the winning too. So I got the relentless wristband too. So let's go. Let's go. Were yeah. you there at, uh, I mean, obviously you were there when, when he spoke last year or before that two years ago. Yeah. in the mastermind with yeah. uh, probably like 40, 50 people. So yeah. Yeah, dude, he's yeah. awesome. So that's he's actually, awesome. I'm glad you brought that up kind of in, indirectly, but the, um, that's the, been the main, main reasons I like I read relentless and I found out that Sam was having Tim speak. I was like, all right, golden door time. Like we got to like that, you know, 1%, just whatever, motivates me to go do that. Like it's worth it for me to get a ticket to door to door con to go meet Tim. And that was like, that was my, if you're like one thing that helped me get my first golden door is like just this it sounds silly, but like the speaker lineup that I want to go meet those mentors I've been reading. And I, you know, it's like, I can go meet this guy. And then the other year we had John C. Maxwell. I was like, I never thought I'd get to see him in person. That's super cool. In person, so, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, were you in that room as well with, with John C. Maxwell? Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. There's a lot of people in that room. Yeah. yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Absolute legend, dude. I, uh, it's funny. I, I have the same kind of story. Um, 2019 or 20. No, no. Well, yeah, 20, 2018, I think is when it was when I went to my first outside of like door of our conference and like a Tony Robbins event to go and I chased down a speaker and it was Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas. And that's yeah. when I got my first real paid mentor, which is Cole Hatter, mm-hmm. because I went to Thrive. Yeah. And it, you know, I wanted, I wanted to go because of the speaker lineup. So that's, it's a really interesting, uh, really interesting story that you have there that you, you went because of the speaker lineup and then you, you went with an expectation to this person's going to give me something that mm-hmm. I need to get to the next level. And so you went with an expectation, which is uh, really cool. And it's just awesome to see that you actually followed through on it. So, um, it'd be cool to, if you can elaborate on that a little bit, like what, 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 what was going through your head, you know, on the plane ride there or whatever, you know, sure. what was going on in your head then? Yeah. So really, um, and leading up to the, I guess the trip to, to Utah for that event, I really, you really, you have to break it down and figure out like, for me, it was, all right, how many do I need to do a day on pace, like minimum so that by, you know, and I don't know where I heard this, but it's talking about like, try to, whatever your goal is for the month, try to go hit it in a, your first week. Yeah. And then the rest, you know, whatever you got to do to condense it into that time frame, And then the rest, you know, the third week, fourth week, fifth week, that's just all, you know, cash that you're stacking up. Right. So try to go figure out that. And that was breaking it down for me. I was like, all right, I need to go hit this many. And we were introducing, um, we already had like cell phone, internet TV. And at the time I wish, I wish I started going into solar sooner, <laughs> like just solar, but, um, but at the time I, I knew I needed to lead from the front for my guys. And that was like one big thing that we had a scoring system, I guess, with the different products that we're coming out with. And um, it's a uh, kind of silly thing about it now. Like I haven't sold an account in like two, three years, uh, four, uh, probably in four years now with Viasat, which is like satellite internet, but it's unlimited. Um, yeah. So I, I was the number one rep for that. And I got to go shoot gigs out of helicopters with Chad Mendez and Dry Favor. So let's go. Um, that was pretty cool. So, and they're both awesome uh, guys. They're uh, got to go stay on a ranch in, uh, I think, Bowie, Texas is where we stayed at. And then while we we're waiting for the other crews to go, we'd shoot machine guns and like silenced shotguns. And it's kind of cool. So, really wow. cool event. And that, that pushed me to go, like, all right, I got to go this product plus all these other products. And it's really, I messaged Sam. I was like, hey, I have like 750 products sold, you know, and that, you know, calculate it all out it's like i have all these different things does that count for golden door it was like i, I don't i didn't know any other and it took me a couple, i think it was like a month or so before i heard back and then i just got an email he's like we don't really have no word for that <laughs> and tim probably i think that's what he said on stage too but like he uh, yeah i remember that he uh i got i just got an email for a ticket that like congratulations went to golden door and i just like i was like oh sweet we're going, we're going to see, let's go see tim and all the other speakers so i was, I was pumped um but like 
Yeah, I, I think leading up to that I was just figuring out how I needed to go, what, what pace I need to do for the year, but not go in December 31st, like figuring out, all right, by November or end of September. Just yeah. a lot of times like guys would go out and there's a guy that worked with us that did, at the time was like a record, you know, a thousand TV accounts and he did 152 days, um, Brock McCurdy. And he, he um, like for him to do it in that short, like there's no way I need to, like I don't need to push that the whole year, I'm year round, but like how do I figure out how to do it by the end of September or sooner? So yeah. And reverse engineering what I need to do daily, no matter, you know, and, and at that point it didn't become, you know, kind of go back to that Tony Robbins quote, like stay flexible with your decisions or your goals. Right. But be flexible in your approach. And so mm -hmm. there were some days where it just like seemed, it's like, Oh man, like bagel. And it's like that they'll, they'll happen. But at the end of the day, like, you know, do, keep doing the same things and do the things that the top people are doing and try to, yeah figure out what those things are. And, uh, you know, you probably agree with me on this, that most people that are really good at what they do or, you know, and we can talk about Dave Allred, like they're really open to sharing those things because other people help them get to where they are. And they're grateful for that. And a lot of times they have that attitude of gratitude. And so right. it's just more of, you know, it's not that they're not accessible, but it's, you know, figure out a way to go and, you know, uh, uh, at the end of my, uh, did a mission, Seoul, South Korea, kind of re going back to like, I had a, one of my companions that basically was like, at, it was the very last, maybe three weeks of my mission. And he was like, Hey, uh, how many books have you read? I was like, well, just what I read in like AP English in high school, you know, we had to read two of every genre. <laughs> He's like, you are so far behind. And this guy, and this guy, um, he would, he had been, uh, reading tons of books over his mission that were just autobiographies and like thick books. And I just, I never understood that. And then he, before I could answer, like, what, why do you think people read, you know, why do, why do you think people write books? And before he could answer, I could answer that, he answered with, because if it takes them 40 years to learn something, they can put it into, you know, eight, eight hours of, you know, content. So you don't have to go and learn that yourself. Absolutely. It condenses that time. And I was just like, from that point, that was a huge pivot in my life, like huge pivot, just, all right. So I need to go, I need to read more books. And then I heard something about, I was reading, uh, listening to a lot of Lewis House, School of Greatness. And uh, it's funny because all the people he had on, I ended up reading a lot of those books. And then yeah. I actually got distracted from his podcast and been reading more books ever since. So I haven't gotten yeah. back on, on track with all his episodes and stuff. But um, there's some, there's a lot of great podcasts out there too. But it uh, heard something on one of his podcasts that was talking about how, you know, the top CEOs read a book a, a book a month or a book a week, something like book that. Week, so yeah. I'm going to do that. So yeah. I just like mental decision wasn't necessarily like the stronger, the why, the easier, the how. And so for uh -huh. me, was, I knew why people wrote books and I don't want to have to make those same mis mistakes. Right. And I feel like that as you learn things, kind of like pressure, pre pressure is a privilege, uh, pressure is a privilege. So it's uh -huh. like you end up those things you learn. I feel like I learned those things so I can help disseminate those to others that I teach. Right. Whether it's, in the car for like 30 minutes before I drop them off the area or whether it's, you know, whenever I'm distilling that knowledge or something that helps them, I, I feel like I need to be ready to be able to help those people with that. Um, yeah. That's a great, wow. like, that's why I write, that's why I read books and that, that pivot point of why, why do people read books? You know, why were they write them? So that really helped me out and perspective, gave me a huge perspective on why behind books and everything. Read them every what, what, what do you think? So I'm a, I'm a, I talk about this a lot and I teach about this a lot, you know, the 168 hours in a week, right? And if it takes you eight hours to read a book, you got 160 hours left, right? You sleep for 40 hours. You've got 120 hours left to do your job, like, and everything, be it being a single man or be a husband. Right or whatever, you whatever, whatever the person is that's listening. To us, right? Yeah, be a good one. Yeah. Um, what? Why? What? I guess within your uh, within your company, within your offices that you run, what? How are, are you, how are you incentivizing your guys to read books? Great question. That's actually something I was just thinking about. Like when you talked about when you read the books for that Dave talked, about, like hey, you went back and gave him basically a report on those. Um, I incentivize guys to do it, but I also know that I give them a little bit. And if they go and like actually act on that, um, then I open them up to more stuff that they're right. I feel like they're ready for. And maybe that's selfish of me, but I do, I would say put more of my, like 
you know, read it. Like I had a guy that uh, for years been working with me and the other day he texted me and he's like, Hey, what, you know, what couple books would you recommend? I'm going to, you know, try to read some this weekend because we had a hurricane coming through. So it was like, we're not going to necessarily be working. So it was like, but I had never out of like when I, I would have never guessed that he would want it to read like going to books and you know, whether he's gone and completed those things that I've sent him or not, but like for him to send that, I was like, all right, I, I just sent him first thing. I was like, Atomic Habits. I was like, first one, read that. Like out of all the books, I was like, hey, if you're going to start, like for at least for that rep, I was trying to cater, like, hey, what uh-huh. things I feel like would help him. I think that pretty universal for that book, but that was just my knee jerk. And then have you read The Go-Giver? Of course. So that was like my like, oh, wait, no, no, this guy needs like Atomic Habits is going to be good. And I was like, all right, YouTube, I'm sure there's an audio version of this. Go-Giver sent that to him. And he, it's quick read. It's like two hours and 30 minutes. If you haven't read it, game changer. Like um, if you, if you have a guy that's, that's maybe a high performer that isn't, you know, has been more, I'm not saying selfish, <laughs> but if you have a guy that's like, could be better if he realized like the value he can create for others and the impact that he'll have long-term, however you need to like get him to get them to read that, to read Go-Giver. There's a couple other versions of the book, but like the, like the original, I had someone give it to me my first, after I won my first trip for my company, they gave me a paper got pack, paperback copy of that. And I read it, uh, I think we were at Cancun or something. Um, and I finished it that week while we were on a trip and it was just like perspective. I already kind of had that perspective, but like that just opened up like articulating, all right, what things you need to go do and how you can go, like what's the impact stratospheric success like that you can have if you're helping others. And in that moment, when he asked me, you know, and going back to your question of like, how do I incentivize guys? I did have a guy reach out, you know, Hey, what book do you recommend? I'm going to read it. All right. I'm going to read that tonight. Uh, sent the audio over to him pretty quick read, like two and a half hours compared to like eight, eight or nine. But um, that was cool for me to like, all right, he knows that I, a read, you know, and he trusts me enough to like recommend him a book that he would benefit him. And B it's like, it's cool to see that he's in that, on that path right now of like, that he wouldn't, you know, hasn't been the last couple of years. It's kind of cool for him to like reach out and do that. So it makes me proud as a, you know, as a mentor and as a leader for, for him. Um, and got other guys that, you know, reach out and stuff, but I would to incentivize guys. Cause definitely there's way more books than I think, but everyone should read more. And I think you do have to understand the why first. And I think that was for me, as like under help. I help guys first understand, okay, why people write books and then help them understand, Hey, if it takes you 40 years to learn a lesson, wouldn't you rather break it down to the nine hours? Or eight hours, right? For 20 bucks. 20 bucks, yeah. Principles by Ray Dalio, right? That was one of the uh, like, perspective wise. I was like, all right, right there. <laughs> so it was like one Bro. of those things where it's like, hey, Bro. if you can learn what he needs to learn, what he can teach, like all those like, things he messed up on, and it takes you this many you know, hours to learn and you can reread it, he's your mentor at that point. Like, Dude. I guess it perspective wise also helped guys understand, like, hey, if you could sit down with a guy like Ray or you know, uh, people talk about Warren Buffett, but you know, he's talked about like he's, he's everything he could give people advice while he's written about. <laughs> um, but right, you know, like people like that. Um, I forgot his name. The guy that uh, just stepped down right before COVID for from Disney. Um, I couldn't tell you. I forget. His name. Um, basically, was in charge of buying Marvel, right? And and uh, he was like. CEO of Disney during that time when he did acquired um, Marvel and uh, Star Wars, like for super cheap compared to, I mean, all the IP stuff has come out with um, metaverse and NFTs and stuff. So it's just nuts. But anyway, the, uh, if you can help a guy understand like, Hey, if you could sit down and spend 30 minutes with this guy, wouldn't that be cool? All right, let's take 40 years of his life's le- life lessons. Why don't, you know, and then condense that and go read it. So that, that's just rather than incentivizing, I think helping guys understand why, to read a book it helps me the most to help because I'm uh, there's a book called by Gretchen Rubin called uh, Four Tendencies. There's Questioner, Obliger, Upholder, and Rebel. Um, pretty easy to Google. You guys pull it up, but great book and talks about like so for me I'm a Questioner, Obliger, so I want to help others for myself. Uh, obviously, Rebels kind of goes for without speaking. You know, it's just like Rebel. You know, they, people tell you you can't do something, you go do it. Uh, questioner, you just want to understand the why. And so for me understanding like helping guys understand the why I think helps them, but also helps me under like if a guy asks me, why should I read this? And then it brings it back to 
because this, this, and this, right? Where you actually read uh, Unbreakable, Tony Robbins, right? And like, or Unshakable. 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 Um, Cyber, Cybernet, Cyber, Psycho, Cybernetics, Maxwell Maltz, like great sales book. Um, yeah, Winning, Tim Groberman's newest book too. So like, I don't know, just, that's also why I want to go to DoorDrop because I've been reading and I've been reading, I guess up to that point, three, three years consistently a book a week. And it's like, I get a chance to go meet someone that like I've been reading his books. Like, Actually, yeah, yeah, and so I think if I do incentive, it, so this is kind of a little insight, little nugget, I guess, of if this helps. But um, I incentivize, and there's probably system processes in place for most companies to do this. But guys, when they first start out, um, I incentivize them to finish all the training videos. Or like I say, hey, if I, you know, we're investing in you. If you invest in yourself, I'll invest in you, and we'll we'll go get you a shoes or a jacket if you finish the, the training videos and uh, and your script and so if they get that done usually have a three-day time period like hey just simple like shouldn't take them a month right it's like hey three days finish all the videos it's like three hours you know 60 videos or two minutes each or whatever the video training video looks like program um and then have the script down passed off with me by this day but also just helping them like hey what day do you feel like you could finish all that mm -hmm. all right saturday night all right sounds good let's do that by saturday night um you know shoot me a text on friday you know where you're at with it um, you know, and then, that, and if you get done, some guys will get done before. And then that's, those are the guys actually record. That's what, all right. By Saturday, when do you, you know, when do you feel like you can finish this book by? And, but a lot of times I actually log my guys into my audible. So like I got three, 400 books on there. So that's another, I guess, way that I help guys get into reading, but also I'll find that there's always like an audio on YouTube of a couple of books. Yeah. So it's easy to just send over these links and like, Hey, you know, yeah. um, I'll, I'll go get you some shoes if you finish this book. So it just makes it, I don't know, I feel like investing in others to help them get that kind of self-development uh, yeah. process started for themselves, for their life. It just, I'm here to make, you know, for me, the biggest thing is make, make a bigger impact to humble myself to get work and mentor others and really doing this job to help to where I can go, you know, do a, like a church service mission over in Korea. That'd be awesome with my wife. But yeah. I need to be in a position to where financially I have the assets in place to be able to walk away for two, three years to go do that. Yeah. And I just feel like it'll be kind of, a, I guess, maybe a selfish reason. I want to humble myself and be go experience those things. But also, just, I know just know the impact and you get to be right there for, you know, front seat to all the good that's happening. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. And you're talking about the future, correct? For the future, yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, that's that a, is a bigger, a bigger wife for myself and my wife. That is so awesome, bro. I, I mean, I am in awe that uh, how how similar our brains and our hearts work. The the go giver leader, bro, Jake, you are a uh, man. That is it's an honorable thing, and and I, I don't I don't uh, you know, Bible says to show honor where it's due, and um, I, I want to make sure you understand that about yourself. That that dude just I know what you go through. You know the guys and girls that listen to this. You know they, they, the ones that are the high achievers, the golden door winners. They know what you're going through. They know what struggles and stuff like that that you've gone through. We've all seen it. You you are doing um, more. You're doing better than you think you are. You know, and and you, you probably know that you're doing well. You probably you obviously you know you ooze confidence, um, but you know I'm sure people will say you know you're cocky instead of you're confident. You know you're arrogant instead of you're proud. Like, I'm proud that I cleaned up my room. That doesn't make me arrogant. Make my bed. What? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Um, so, yeah, dude, you're uh, – that's a really honorable thing. I think it's, that. Yeah, that's, that's really exciting. I, it's not every day I get to talk to somebody like that, man. You know, I'm, I'm, looking, yeah. to, I'm looking to put up solar panels on women's shelters, orphanages, churches, or, you know, refugee centers overseas right now. And, and I've done it already, and we're doing yeah. more. And, uh, you know, that's uh, – that's, that's really ultimately the reason why I go out every single day and I still continue to do what I'm doing. You know, I am now I personally, um, I'm sure you've seen this wherever, but like I am personally set up financially for myself and for my children, but not for my children's children yet. Um, I'm building that, but that takes, right. you know, seven to 10 years um, to do that and then continuing. So it's like, okay, cool. Well, my kids are set up. I don't even have kids yet. Jake, like, you know, I just got married, right? Like the yeah. last year. Um, but, but being able to get there so that I can be like, Hey, like I can move away, like basically get a $30,000 salary. If that, like if, even if that, right. Going overseas and doing a mission, other yeah. mission work, right. Um, like that, that is, uh, 
gosh, man, it's just so cool to talk to somebody else that's actually on that. And I, I love that, dude. Yeah. I, I want to make sure that we stay in touch and, you know, on the projects that you're working on, I want to be able to help and support and pray for you guys. So that's, uh, that's just, that's just awesome, dude. I'm excited, yep. excited yeah, to, they, to work with you in the future. Yeah. And the dark, you know, Tim River talks about like the dark side of things, right? Yeah. And, uh, I think that when you're, yeah, I guess the, I think Irvin Meyer talks about it as like the, I think it's on TikTok right now, but basically like the high achievers don't like working with, you know, kind of moderate achievers and then vice versa. And, but as long as you have the, you have to work with like an aligned goal and understand the why, like what you're working towards to work together. And yeah. there's definitely been days where I'm like frustrated that, you know, none of the appointments, for instance, none of them sat, you know, or, you know, and also no appointments were put up for the day, you know, just being totally, you know, being vulnerable on that side. So, and, and uh, I do think that, you know, going back to the flexible with goals, whatever, I guess for every, any golden doors, you know, winners out there and just, I, you know, guys in general, it's like guys and gals and I, whatever you do, as long as you're continuing to progress every day, progress is happiness. I'm a big believer in that. And uh, Ed Milet talks about like, you're not, anything your unhappiness is always connected to comparison mm. Ooh. So you, say it again all unhappiness is always connected to comparison right ah. and so now you can use that for good or you can use that for you know it, where you get in your mm. own thoughts and stuff right so you can always use that as like leverage in competition like comparing but just understand that like whenever you're comparing you know and it's the example that i use is kind of funny it's like when a girl you know when your wife walks in or you're with your wife walking into a restaurant or wherever you're at, it's like they're looking for who's more attractive. It's like it's going, they're comparing, right, unfortunately. And, you know, when you go into <laughs> door-to-door con, it's like. Yeah, you know, good he, point, he, good he point. Goes, you guys kind of get to us a little bit. But True. Just, just know that, like, as long as you're progressing and you guys out there, like, daily, you know, one, just get 1% better. That's, that's all been a big mantra of mine, just continue to get better. And, you know, looking back on the day, like, three things, write down three things that you did well and one thing to work on. If you guys walk away with anything, like how to do that, like progress every day, three things you did well and one thing to work on. So for the next day, and that's just like simple as like, Hey, I, you know, made my bed or I, uh, you know, and what it does, it lets you reflect and know, if, you know, there, you're having trouble finding things that you did good. It's like, you realize what you could do better tomorrow as well. So, but the dark side of, you know, that's why I want to meet Tim Grover's like, what is that dark side? Like tapping into your dark side of yourself as far as the, uh, like the inner beast, I guess, is like turning on the, what do you call it? You just got to continue to move forward no matter what happens. And it's, um, I guess, kind of cliche, but you got to, yep. you know, do it when you don't feel like it. A lot, of, a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the interviews are saying that. I'm not sure why. It's a maybe it's just a culture thing. Like, uh, why do we say it's super cliche? Like, if it's work for you, Jake, mm-hmm. it's not cliche, right? Yeah. Um, it's only cliche if we're comparing ourselves to people that haven't already done it, or like we're still like trying to get approval from those people, but they're not going to. The, the, the people that, like, for me, I'm like, that's not cliche. Like, yes, hundred percent, yes, bro. Yes, keep going. Yes, that, they, yeah, I believe. Yes, that's correct. But it's only cliche to the ones that are not doing it. So why does it matter? Not that it doesn't matter, but like, why does it matter that it's cliche? It's cliche to them, but if it works, Jake, it works, bro. Like, yep. and the success leaves clues, does it not? It does. Yep, love that. And the biggest thing that helped me for a second door, golden door, like, because it's harder. It's harder than the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Say that. It's the perspective and it's probably in one of Tim's book or um, Tim Grover's book, but basically it's like everything gets easier when you stop expecting it to be easy. Wow. So, and I knew that and that's, you know, Sam will set it to, Hey, it's harder to come back in second year. It's even harder to come back the third year. But that, that was like the biggest thing for me. It's, and, and you have to, you have to crave that end goal, right? That, that, progress so intensely that the work becomes irrelevant right you just have to like whatever you need it you know the why and the why is so strong that you just the work is 
it's just part of what you need to do and it's not a choice. You already made that decision. That was the biggest thing for me going into that second year, try to get a second gold doors and still going for four this year. So it's, it's not easy. It's even, I feel like it's harder and harder every year, but that's just like, as you get older, you gotta work out more because you're, you get weaker and weaker. So you gotta read more and read more. So. Dude, that is so true. I'm 30 now and I'm like, bro, <laughs> my ass would like go and freaking eat in and out burger at 22 years old. And now, mind you, I would eat no cheese, no spread, no bread, right. but still, protein it was in and out burger. You know, I'd be protein style, pickles, mustard instead of spread, no ketchup, no high fructose corn syrup, all that, right? Lettuce, you know, tomatoes, pickles, onions, and meat. And uh, still, I'm like, yeah, I can't do that anymore. Um, dude, I, I want to talk about a couple of things, man. I want to shift gears here a little bit. Um, yeah. You, you, uh, I'll get into that other one later, but f- first you said the three to one ratio, dude, that is why, why tell, please explain to the, our listeners, um, why is it so important? Like what, what breakthrough, what quote, what, where did you learn that from? Where did you learn that we are innately in, in inherently or whatever, how do you ever say that? We are programmed. Let's just say we're programmed. Well, you're trying to be smart. We are programmed to think, criticize yourself, criticize yourself, criticize yourself. What am I doing wrong? 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 When you get a, when you get a paper back from your 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 high school or whatever, your college, and it's like, where's all the red marks? Where's all the red marks? Where's all the red marks? It's like we're coached to look at what's wrong. Have you read the book Strength Finders? Yeah, two point oh. Yeah, so you know you know how yeah yeah yeah. So you know uh, you know how we're uh, he says hey look like don't focus on your weaknesses, focus on double, triple down on your strengths, right? So like, why is it, what, what, what about, like you said, the three to one ratio, I, I give away, a do- I give away my, my door knocking critiquing tool, like on the internet all the time. It's clickbait, but it's like, it works so well when you're on doors or you're in house. I learned this at solar city under John Frampton in 2015. It was, Hey, write down three things you did well in the close. And one thing you're going to work on. And then I was like, well, if I'm going to do it in the clothes, I might as well do that on my doors. So yeah. I've got a book. I've got a notebook that's in my closet right here that has like, dude, lists of three things I did well, one thing I work on two or three times, two or three recordings that I would record myself and in after the house. So on the, on the door, I would go back through and I would actually go back to Starbucks before I would go home. So I was in Euless, Texas and I lived in Irvine or like a, Irving. No, wait, where did I live? I don't even, I lived in Dallas, Dallas. So I would go, I was in Euless, Bedford, Great, Grapevine, Hearst in Texas, 2015. And I would go back to Starbucks and I would do my little devotion, if you will, my little, my little stopping, let me stop work. Let me separate from work really quick, even though I was still going to work. But if I didn't do it, then I would, I would miss everything because I'll be listening to like a book on the way home for 45 minutes. So I would do the three to one. But why is, why is that? Tell me about that. What, why are we, why do you think we're con- conditioned or programmed to think why we're, we need to work, you know, we, we always want to focus on, especially new reps, right? New reps, mm-hmm. even, even older guys too. If that's, it's like, oh man, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. It's like, whoa, 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 chill out, bro. Slow down. Relax, dude. You did this well, this well, this amazing dude right here. Right. Even if it's like, even if they suck, right. I'm still like, bro, you did this, 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 this well. Cause I'm like, you still did some good things. This, some things. Well, like stop being so hard on yourself. Cause then it's like, Oh, well, you know, I keep striking out. Well, I'll never hit the ball. It's like the downward cycle of I'll never get out of this, you know? Yeah. So t- tell me about that, bro. Where did you come yeah. up with that? Why, why, why is that? What's up with this three to one ratio, man? Tell, tell the listeners about that, bro, please. I'm like, yeah. please somebody else tell them the truth. <laughs> I, uh, you know, and a lot of guys probably, if you get down to the bait, like vulnerable with yourself, honest, you know, a lot of times our scripts are everything we say, everything that we've become is a, isn't us. It's a lot of influence that we've had, you know, good or bad, whatever that is. But I like my script isn't mine. Like it's, it's a mixture of all these different you know guys that are really good at it. And I, I don't take uh, credit, I guess, for any, you know, every, like my script or like whatever else I do or say, it's like, it's all these mentors and everything that kind of helped me get to that point. But um, 
yeah, I got, uh, who's listening to this, I'll, uh, I'll shout out to Trevor DeMordant. He's a medical student at BYU now, but one of my mission companions basically was like, Hey, like, I, I think in that environment too, uh, just every day going out and serving, I guess you have, you know, if you're going out every day and knocking, you try, at least the mindset I had was like trying to, I didn't realize at that time, but I was habit stacking, right? It was like, all right, you have a schedule, you go going boom, 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 trying to do, all right, make your bed, all right, go to the gym, like checking off those little things. And I think it was just, I was hungry to go find the next habit stack. And I think him writing, Trevor writing those things down, I'm like, all right, we do this at the end of the day. It's like three things we did good and three things, you know, and one thing to work on. So it, I think it, A, I think going back to the, you know, why people read books, it goes back to the, I think that too, right? It's like, hey, how, why do we do that three and one? Or why does that help? A, it gives you a vision for the future. It's like, all right, how do you do better tomorrow, right? So that comparison comes in, but in a positive way where you're looking, you're, you're like, all right, you have, you have purpose for the next day right? uh-huh. or at least the direction. I think that's, so you go to bed, think about that, right? And all of us, you know, whether you guys want to admit it or not, I feel like after you've been doing door door for a while, you have, you know, you have sleep pitching, you know, and for, you know, guys that have been doing it for the first end of the summer, like, oh, I can't get away from this. You know, for me, I was like, oh, sweet. I had, you know, I didn't realize that I was training while I was sleeping <laughs> and athletes have the same thing, right? They're focused on, uh, I guarantee you, you know, all the top, you know, the greats, uh, basketball, football, whatever it is, basketball shooting their free throws while they're, you know, they're walking through different scenarios in the brain, like you're you're are, are, i believe we're designed to progress like that right and to think of different ways to address customer concerns you know it's not um saying that we're going to come up with a new thing for heart surgery all the time <laughs> you know just while we're sleeping and visions and stuff but like it's one of those things where i think if you have a purpose for the next day that's what helps but also you have a po- positive mentality behind it like all right did good and you forget not that you're forgetting the day but you're figuring out three things you did well so you, you almost write it off as like a check, like, all right, check the box, did well. Um, something that I also did kind of like along those lines that I think led me to that when I heard that, you know, three things work on one thing or three things did well, one thing to work on was I was already doing the Benjamin Franklin thing where he's like, take a virtue and then work on that for a week. And if you basically you do a, like a, uh, you write a, basically a box, right? A journal, wherever you're doing it and you have seven days and it's like that, you know, whether it's, um, I don't know, hard work or I guess different virtues. So uh, things like character or um, I don't know, trustworthiness or like being studious or figuring out like the things you want to work on. And basically if you did well, you do an up, like almost like a chart going up. If you plateaued, then you put a line through. And if you didn't, if you went worse, then you would put a line like going from the top left to the bottom, um, bottom right instead of, you know, an up. And so as long as you basically, if you hit seven days in a row going up, progressing every day, then you can move on to the next trait. And I think that you can go Google it. It's like there's a list yeah. of different traits that Benjamin Franklin did for that, but it's like progressing every day. Once you've gone a week of like working on that, then you can move on to the next like thing you're working on as far as virtue with that. So um, that's just something I was already kind of adding because I already had that mentality of mm. wanting to progress. And I think that was just something that like, I was like, Ooh, sweet new thing I can do. Hey, I yeah. like that. You know? So I think it adds yeah. attention. You're, there's intentionality to it versus just we hear all these things, but it's like when you're doing them, there's, there's intention behind it. And you know, you have to have a greater why because the greater the why, the easier the how, but the greater the why behind that. If you do want to progress, if you don't want to progress, that's cool. Yeah. You don't need to write down three things you did well and one thing to work on, but it, it does give you intention for the next day, even if it's like a family thing, right. Or physical, financial, spiritual, whatever category that is of like three things to work on one, you know, three, three things to do well, one thing to work on. Just give the intention. I believe. Uh, yeah. Dude, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Yeah. That helped me a lot. You, what, one thing that I know a virtue or an attribute that I've noticed about every golden door or whatever that I've ever talked to or high performer that I've talked to and, or interviewed on this podcast is that they are very intentional about their time, about being present about their their growth, right? Personally, yeah. we're not perfect at it, but it's just progress. <laughs> Correct. Which uh, I was told that quote years ago um, that progress over perfection, because I was so hard on myself, man. You know, I don't know why I was so hard on myself, but I use it. I use it. I turned it to be using it for the good, 
because it was using it for the bad for a very long time of how hard it was on myself. And uh, I think it's a very common thing. Are you, were you at a certain point extremely hard on yourself? You know, it's... Um, to, the, to the point where it became negative? Yes and no. I, I think, and, and it, there's a book called It Takes What It Takes. Um, Russell Wilson is actually the, um, in the forward of it, uh, playing, you know, quarterback for the Seahawks, now Broncos. Um, Trevor Moad is the author of that one. But I think that the, to answer that question, I think that It Takes What It Takes was the first book that articulated like my mindset just from maybe an early age, just kind of, I guess, ingrained in me in the sense of I'd never been <laughs> at, at, like, you ask anyone around me, like I never, they've never really seen me angry, right? Never really seen me like super, I guess, negative emotion, you know? Um, but I think it's, but also just the example that it takes what it takes in the book that, you know, coming back to like the two lines learned from it is if you're on the, you know, you're playing football, you're on the one yard line, you haven't earned the positivity to say, Hey, we're, yeah, we're going to score, but you also haven't earned the negativity side of it. Like, Oh, I hope they don't stop us. Right. Cause anything negative, ne- negativity works negatively 100% of the time. <clears throat> negativity works negatively 100% of the time. And it's 170 t- times more likely to happen by saying it out loud. You can think it, right. That's one thing, but like physically saying, there's a lot of studies in that book that have talked about it. Um, Trevor Mudd just came out with his second book. He actually, like, uh, you think about every single, like, major team, uh, Alabama, Ohio State, he's been their mental coach for those college title years. And he was Russell Wilson's personal mental coach. Like, and they, you know, and uh, he actually passed away last, often passed away, I think, last October. And his book, his audiobook version came out, and Russell Wilson actually read. Trevor Mudd's newest book in the Audible, so super cool. So he's like reading wow. a version because he's talking about Russell Wilson a lot. But uh, wow. really, the mentality is is again going back to the one yard line. You haven't earned. Hey, yeah, we're going to score. We got this. But you also haven't earned the. Oh, I hope they don't stop us. It's what do we got to do to score, right? It's that maybe Tom Brady mentality, Michael Jordan mentality. It's like it's not sure. a matter of like positive or negative. And just so to answer that question, I've always that book's been the first book that actually been able to articulate like how. My brain kind of thinks of just, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just neutral. I know what I need to go do. And I highly recommend that book for anyone that like is either needing a rep to help see that. If you're on that same like thought process, um, you know, wavelength as far as like understanding the neutrality part of life. Um, or if you feel like, you you know, maybe that would help you. Like, yeah, it takes what it takes Trevor Moen. And it's, um, I guess if you know if anyone knows who Russell Wilson is right. It's every year he's been able he's gotten a pay raise. So it's like the only way you're doing that is if you're you know, continuing to do better at a high level and continue yeah. to grow. And that's the mentality of that one percent mentality, right? Just a neutral mindset of like, hey, whatever you got to do, go do it. It's not a matter of like, do I want to or do I have? It, it's more. Of, it actually becomes more of a have to, right? It's like in order to achieve this result, this is what we need to do. We need to, we, do, we need to score. How do we do that? Versus overly positive versus, Oh, I got this. Right. A lot of times that when, when guys are like, Oh, I, I got, you know, we're kind of cocky with stuff. A lot of times that's actually them, you know, the insecurities are a lot of sometimes behind that too. So it's more of, Hey, just neutral going into, Hey, I, you know, I got this. That's why, you know, I see some guys that after they score a touchdown or after they, you know, score, you know, Kobe score, game winning shot, you know, or whatever it is, it's just more of, on, you know, game's not finished, job not done. So that's that mentality that, I guess, to answer that question, storms, Tony Robbins talks about like storms coming through and the storm's going to be there, but you're not, you're letting it pass. You're not, it's, it's there in the moment, but it's, it's going to pass, right? There's going to be sun after that rain. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let me, let me shift again really quickly. You, yeah. you're clearly a book of knowledge, no pun intended. You've read hundreds and hundreds of books. What, what about it now? Like I, one of the things that I've seen in the top performers in our industry is that they are readers. It's not just that they're a leader because you know, they say leaders are readers, right. right? But what do you, how do you think, how do you think your personal longevity in business and, and in life 
is going to be altered because of the amount of knowledge that you've gained in books. I like that. Versus somebody that's not. So how is the, in a way to say, uh, how's the impact, how's the level of impact raised by by having the knowledge, those, by having the knowledge. Yeah. Like, like, okay. Like, okay. Let's go back. Yeah. No, imagine no. you, imagine yeah. you did it. Imagine you didn't read those books. Mm -hmm. Imagine you didn't gain the knowledge. Imagine you didn't get those breakthroughs. Obviously you wouldn't be here. Like, I don't care how much, how competitive you would be. Like, this is the difference. You see the difference between somebody that is a multi-year golden door award winner. That's going to, that's, that's going to continue to win in life. Right. Instead of being a flash in the pan, like Ed Milet said at DoorDorCon last year, the year before that, you know, a flash in the pan, you know, anybody can have two, three, four years. But, like, to have multiple years of success that you have currently had, I do. It's clear that it has something to do with the books that you've read. I believe that like God, it, when God puts something in you, it's there for a reason. That <clears> vision that I, I don't. I feel like I've been, the things I've learned, I have a responsibility to add value to others because of that. Wow. And it's doing me, it's, it's not in a letting, not letting down myself, but it's, it's just something that like, I, I feel like, I just feel like I have a, what's Grant Cardone talks about like you have a responsibility to be it's your duty to be successful right yeah. something along those lines it's like yeah. your duty your goal your obligation it's it is and it's I believe that like me whatever I'm learning is for me to help others hmm. and I guess the sooner that people can see that whatever they're you know, whatever trial they're going through is so they can help others later on. The sooner they do that, the the more in line I feel like their life they'll feel like it is for what with what they need to be doing. Hmm. And we always feel like we need to be doing more, but it's that one percent better. And if you do feel like that, you know, I guess God's put that vision in you to continue to go and help others. Tim Story talks about this a lot, right? It's like. Uh -huh. You have a setback because, you know, when you have a setback, that's really a setup for you to, you know, God's setting you up to go for the next thing and pivot to the next thing in life that you need to go do and, and help others with. And that's, it's a duty. It's, it's just, it's just what's something I, I know that, um, and I'm not perfect at it. There's been, you know, uh, I missed a week in February cause I was out, um, or was it whenever the conferences were for kind of like I was helping set up um, before and like helping other guys. I was training some new guys on Utah and we had basically time. I didn't get to read, really read that week. And I, I was like, oh man, I get, get my, my book in this week. So it actually made me to go read like three the next week <laughs> instead of one. <laughs> so um, now they weren't, you know, 24 hour books on like the civil war, you know, crazy sure, sure. <laughs> on the Abe Lincoln so or something, but yeah, it was like snowball Warren Buffett, 50 hours, whatever it is. Oh man. Yeah. And what, uh, Warren peace or yeah big ones like that. Um, but it, yeah, I just, I just feel that there's so many things I've been given, but like I've been, I'm grateful for and blessed with that. I have responsibility to go up others and, you know, whether it's my family or, you know, someone out there that I had, uh, there's a guy the other day that he's like, Hey man, like, I just, um, can you help me, uh, change my tire real quick? And then I need some gas. I'm getting to Charlotte, my, you know, going, Whatever the story was, I was just swiped my card on his gas and then gave him some gas to go and after I helped him swap his tire. And I know there's just things that like if you're put in a position to help and, you know, talk about this with like different investments, like John C. Maxwell, the biggest thing I took away from his when he came to Rokon was like the more you're able to raise the level of giving, the more that you receive, the more the income that you receive, the, the capacity for you to give is directly correlated how much you make and that level of, like this last year was super cool like first year i've given mo is well in, i guess two years in a row that i've been able to donate 
five figures. Like with, you know, uh, to, uh, we help fight against human trafficking as a company with, with on watch. So, um, uh. and that was always something that I was like, oh, sweet. I want to be able to donate like a good, a good amount, you know, working TV, solar, being able to make more. Just, you know, part of that was my goal from the beginning of the year was like, I, there was a number I needed to go, I wanted to go donate. And that was able to go, was able to go do that. And that's, um, out of all, you know, even Golden Door like that, I actually personally feel that the impact that we we're able to make with that, we got seven, um, I think six or seven girls back to their families and 10 people arrested in March. Wow. So, let's just, go. Like, human trafficking is a thing. There's only what, 1% of victims ever reported. So, it's one of those things that, like, wow. as I'd be able to, you know, level of giving, I'm able to raise that for myself. I know that that's directly correlated as John C. Maxwell talks about how much you're able to make and go impact. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I love, I love that you give back like that and that your heart's there. Uh, we, we call that becoming a living a for purpose lifestyle. So starting a for purpose business, which you guys are for for purpose business, whether you, whether you know that or not, yeah. It's basically where you give a portion of your proceeds, your time, your talents, your resources, or your network to advance some sort of a charity or cause, right? Yep. So you are you are a for-purpose business. That's one of the coolest things I've ever worked on with any client that I've ever worked with, company or individual. I, I literally will not work with them unless, if they're not already doing that, they commit in writing to start living a for-purpose lifestyle. It's just, it's just not a... It's hard. It's hard to get people to, I don't know. First of all, I would, I get to thank God I get to choose who I get to work with now, but like, I, I don't like working with people that are sent like me centric. Like I'm all for you, you being confident and you being great at what you do. But like to a certain point, if it's only for you, like you do realize that that candle will eventually burn out and you're probably burning on both ends. Like there is no, I don't believe in burnout, but you want to burn, you want, you want to burn out. You want to burn yourself out? Only do it for you because guess what? I've had the cool, fast luxury cars and the cool, you know, stuff, vacations and whatnot. And you've obviously shot pigs from a helicopter. You've done a lot of really cool things as well. It's not as cool as it we made it up to be. These cool, fancy cars, you know, the luxury cars and whatnot. Like, it's not as cool as it. Don't get me wrong. The experiences are awesome, right? But once you have that car for six months to a year, you're like, and don't get me wrong. I still like love the car, but like, I'm like, oh, this wasn't as cool as I really thought it was. And it was funny. I heard Ed say that actually. He's like, the only thing that I forget if it was either in, it was in Arte or if it was in a, one of his podcasts. Um, he was like, the only thing that actually keeps me like, wow, is his jet. He's like, everything else is like, it eventually loses its, you know, sexiness about it. If you right. will, like the, the hype about the Ferrari or whatever, you know, it's like, yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I'm glad that you're, you're giving back. It's a, um, it's, it's another, yet another attribute or virtue that I see in Golden Door Award winners is that they have that servants mindset that, you know, I, I have, I have come to serve and not be served. Right. It's like mm -hmm. our culture is so like me centric. And, and again, I, I, I'm all for people need to take care of themselves. If I didn't, you know, I've been sober now as of, uh, yesterday, 10 years from, uh, from, Dude, from congratulations, some, man. Yeah. Since synthetic That's heroin. Awesome. Yeah, oxygen. Yeah. I was taking oxygen yeah. and and rock sets and all this stuff. And uh, you know, six hundred milligrams a day. I was smoking pills and, um, dude, it just was. If, if I did, if I, I would not be sober today if I didn't do it so that other people could see that they could do it as well. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned that you know that you're 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 reading these books and you feel obligated to give back. Now you've got that vision. You've got that 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 dream from God to be able to now give back, and you feel like. You, it's not like a guilt thing, like, oh, well, you know, not like, it's not a guilt thing like you were saying, but to, I think to reiterate on what you're saying there is that you feel like you don't have a choice, that that I have something that can benefit you. I'm going to figure out in whatever door approach I need to do to get it to you. Yeah. And, you know, it might not be, you know, it might not be tough love. It might not be, you know, the nicest, hey, let me just get you this book. I'm going to negotiate with you 
and I will absolutely use whatever sales, semantics, tactics, negotiation tactics to walk somebody off of, back somebody off of a bridge for committing suicide. Like I will absolutely use any sales tactic necessary, you know, dirty, dark, whatever, to, to get them off that ledge. But in, in regards to like helping your people, um, do you have any kids yet, Jake? No, yeah, no, nope, just got three dogs. So I get, I, I have to, right? I have nice. technically I have a, I have a, I have a stepson as a dog. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's cool. It's cool because right now you've got kids that are guys that work for your company, you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, Radix, right? Yep. And you're you're run you're running you're running offices, right? So you yep. basically have that inside of you, and you're giving back to them you know, the things that you have. And, and I'll go back to our original question was, you know, what, what does the books have? What, what does the books, what have they done to you? Right. They've obviously, they, they've changed you. I heard uh, one of my mentors, Dan Fleischman say this a couple weekends ago, we were in uh, Atlanta and he said, uh, once you've, once you've, your brain is expanded, it can never retract. Dan's a great dude. That's a great book right there. Um, you know, once, once your brain has expanded, you can never retract. So, it's uh, it's cool, man. It's cool to see, like man. It's just ah, oh, dude. Like, I feel bad for people that are like, oh, I, I, I give books out all the time. Like, people come in here. Like, I've got like, this is not even my library. This is like a portion <laughs> of the library that I have. I, I moved, I moved to Houston, and I'm in like a, a really small like, you know, I was in like a two thousand square foot house, and now I'm in like a fourteen hundred square foot high rise. And so, like, I don't have my, I don't have room for all my bookshelves. I've got a, my wife's yeah. bookshelf. Luckily, my wife is a reader too. So I'm like, I can't have all these, you know, you know, books, or whatever. But the fact that the fact that you know, when I give books out to people or whatever, like when Dave Allred gave me those books, bro, I was like, dude, I will do whatever you tell me to do. Like, if you said read a book a day, I'm gonna figure it out, bro. I'm going to figure it out. I, I don't know. I might not be perfect progress over perfection, but I'm going to figure out how to do that. If that's what you said, 365 books, okay, cool. You know, there's like apps like for that or whatever now. Like you could like read like the keynotes or whatever yeah. um, or whatever. Well, it's because you, you see that success he's having. And it's like, all right, if I do the same thing he's doing, correct. there's a reason he's telling me. There's a reason he's telling me, dude. And I always tell people this the same thing. I'm like, dude, I'm not smarter than anybody else. I'm not smarter than you. I just do what the smart people told me to do. And that's why I'm here today. The 1%, right? So it's like, yeah. Bro, you are you you've you've oh man, you've just encouraged me, bro. I'm, I wasn't saying I was in a rut last few days, but like I was in like this like weird mindset the last like three or four days, and uh, man, this is this is really uh, this is really enlightening uh, to to talk with you. So I, I'm I'm grateful that that we got to talk. I got a lot of this, dude. Like my, I've got three pages worth of notes here, um, and I hope that anybody that's listening <laughs> is also taking notes on this and goes back. And re listens to this and, and, and can take one, two, three, four, five, probably 15 or 20 attributes that I personally got. I got, oh, I've got 20 attributes. <laughs> okay. I got 20 attributes that I was like, in virtues that I was like, wow, like Jake is this, Jake does this, Jake does this, Jake, Jake, a Golden Door Award winner is this, 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 this. Like I'm taking notes and again, goes back to the 1% rule. Like somebody told me you get a closer seat to in heaven if you took notes in church. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to take notes in church. And then I'm like, if I'm going to take notes in church and it's helping me now, I'm going to just take notes at every, everywhere I go. Yep. So I hope that everyone is, if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you're not taking notes, I hope that you go back through this and take these notes because dude, what Jake has just said, he has dropped some absolute fire on dude, what, what it takes, what the formula is, to be a three-time Golden Door Award winner, a multi-product, multi-service Golden Door Award winner, as he said, the the second Golden Door was the hardest, right? The second Golden Door was the hardest. It's always funny because people will say that the first hundred thousand dollars is the hardest. Well, hundred thousand dollars to a million for me was the hardest. Like that was very hard. But to get to the next one, right? I don't have two million yet, and I've made more than two million. But I don't, I don't have a two million dollar net worth yet. But I'm like. It's a lot easier to make money once you have money. Yeah. Uh, but dude, yeah, your your mindset. Go ahead. Your your, your mindset. Your mindset. Your method. The formula. Your, the habits that you've you've already ex uh, explained here, bro. You are just very intentional about everything that you do, and uh, it's no wonder why you're going to be on stage again this year. I'm excited. And every you know, Golden Door winner or you know, knows this maybe even just on a subconscious level that no matter how many mistakes or you know, how slow you feel like you're progressing, 
or you're doing, you're still way ahead of everyone else that didn't, you know, go out that week or that month or whatever it is. And, yeah. you know, you probably agree with me on that, but just, I think that's a, that's a, that's a subconscious, subconscious driver. And I think it, I feel like it should be pointed out more. And that's that three to one ratio that helps with that. But, you know, you're still so much far, you know, farther ahead than, you know, someone that's not trying. So that's a really good point. Dude, you've had some major breakthroughs in your life. Dude, we could talk for, I've only said this to now, you'll be the second person, but I'm like, bro, I'm going to have to have you back on. I'm not even like halfway through like the questions that I want to ask you. <laughs> we're already over an hour here. Plus the 30 minutes we were talking before this, um, where I had to be like, yo, bro, hold on, hold that for the show, dog. Relax. That was some fine <laughs> content. Right there. Um, dude, you've had some major breakthroughs in your life. You know, I, I can tell why, um, why you're motivated, you know, for your wife, for your future family, you know, for, for serving overseas, for serving people Dude, just like, the motivation to go get more knowledge to help somebody else out because you've obviously failed in the sense of not being able to help certain people out. But you're like, well, if I go read two or three books about it, three, four, five times each, like I'll be able to help them back out. And, uh, to you just, your motivation to want to help is, uh, yeah, your servant, your servant mindset, your servanthood heart is, uh, it's just an honorable thing, dude. Like, I appreciate it. It is. Yeah. It's always the coolest thing to see a guy that you train. Yeah. And then you, you get those, you know, whatever it may be, those texts. Um, had one beginning of the summer, a guy that traded here last year, and then we had to move out to a new market um, a couple hours away that he texted me. He's like, dude, that is that is the most I've made doing I'm this for like six years. And what, it was like with one, one or two customers that he sold that day. And it was really cool because he's like, you know, I saw him post the, you know, get the deal on his own you know, self gen account that he had. And it was like kind of, I guess for me, neutral mindset. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Hey, you got one. Great job. But it was cool to get that text, you know, like yeah. working towards more of those. Right? Hey, I, you know, I was able to go set my, you know, get us, get a step farther than I have the last, you know, three, four years that he's been working. So it's just that mm. much helping guys go create their general, great generational wealth too. So I think that's a bigger part of, for me, I had a, a quick thing. I had a, a grand, my great grandpa. Never got really got to know him. He was maybe I was only four or five when he passed away. Had Alzheimer's and stuff, but he was really good at golf. Be Arnold Palmer a couple times, like in the charity things when he came to Utah. Um, good with stocks. He'd cash out whatever stocks he had and take 40, 50 of us on vacations um, <laughs> to Disney or you know uh, Hawaii or cruise when I was growing up. Um, and as you know, I just feel like the more I learn about him, the more I'm like, Oh, we would have got along pretty well. And I think uh, that, you know, they had, he had a bunch of kids so that none of that really is passing down. Um, so, but I do feel like that, that kind of set a bar for me at least to be able to go create that generational wealth again uh, and do it better, you know, and do it bigger and be able to help others. Let me, let me, let me end here, dude, with this. You said something there that, that I've, I've been talking about for a long time now. You said there's not much, you didn't get to understand your, your, you said your great grandfather. Yeah. So there's not, there's not much that's known about your great, great, great grandfather other than what the stories are. Why, why do you think, have you, have you thought about that your, your kids and your great grandkids or your grandkids are going to listen to this podcast and want to know about grandpa? Jake? Oh man. I think about that. Huh? <laughs> That's, that's good. That's, that's like, good. you want to, you want to know about grandpa. That. I didn't even think like, about that. Jeez. Talk about I, leaving, I, uh, leaving, leaving a legacy, building yeah. generational wealth. And it, I think something that our, my mission president too, like talked about was like, start with the end in mind. Mm. And what that was for him, you know, communicating that vision to us was, you know, Hey, this many, you know, when you're like, send me a picture when you're, um, when your kids, you know, turn eight, get baptized and like send a picture of like when you're having kids and you're doing well. Right. And that's yeah. kind of cool. It's like all the things you had to do leading up to that point mm. for it to, you know, for you to get a stage in life where you are, you know, going on a mission trip yourself or whatever it is, I guess. But that was like something that he's like, start with the end of mind. Like imagine your great, you know, the generational impact you have spiritually. Family, right. but I, I've never thought about it until you just said that. That's hmm. 
that's cool. That, that it gets deeper, right? That's there's a thing called seven levels. Uh, I'm talking about like why, why, and it goes, I feel like that kind of hit hit me on that. You know, that's cool. That's that's great. That's awesome to think about. It makes you smile. Yeah, it's it's one of the reasons why. One of the reasons why I'm so passionate about filming and putting things out on the internet is I'm not really talking. I am talking to Jake Zimmer. I, I am talking to you. Like I am talking to you on the internet. That, that's, you know, I am saying things about what Jake needs to hear, but ultimately I'm talking to my son so that when he was 28, 27, 26, 25, 30, which I am today, he can see what dad did and what dad's mindset and show the real, you know, not just a TikTok version of daddy, but, um, the real, the real side of him. And I, I, I do my very best to, uh, it's funny cause I don't have very many down days, but when I do, I'm very vocal about it. Cause I want people to know that I had a down day after down day, after down day, after down day, when I was addicted to the drugs, uh, you know, for the last 10 years, like, the level of gratitude, the level of just like wanting to like wanting and being so appreciative to be here still, um, is, is, I mean, it doesn't compare. It doesn't, there's not much to compare to it. Um, you feel like you have that duty too. to Absolutely. Absolutely. Otherwise I would have been taken if I wasn't supposed to be here. That's, that's where my mindset's at. So it's a, it's a really, it's a really, really cool thing to, uh, yeah, we share a lot. We share a lot of our mindset in common, bro. Yeah, love you. Love your content. Love. I've been watching for a while, so it's cool to be. It's been an honor. Be appreciate an honor. it, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Don't forget that, man. Your kids, uh, your kids and your grandkids are going to listen to this. I want to know what daddy's about. You know, and if you can, I've done this as well. Is uh, I've I've recorded myself an iPhone and put it into a, a stored folder. Um, on my phone and then it's just things that I'm going through, like almost like a vlog mm-hmm. and it seems kind of funny at first, but I'm like, I don't really go through them. Um, there's, there's a couple that I will go through. There's like one that I, I like didn't want to listen to it, but it was so, so tough to like say it. And I'm like crying in this video and behind I'm, I'm in the back of my car and I'm like filming this. I'm like, why the heck would I film this? But like I started doing this years ago. And I'm crying in the back of my car. My brother was like going through it and like suicidal, bro. It was like really bad. And it was cool because what that's done for me now is like, wow, like my brother's still alive, right? And to be able to have the mindset of everything will work out. Now, maybe not to my my standard. Well, thank God I'm not God or I'm not the president. So I don't have to make those decisions. But if I would have, if I would have just eliminated, and I've been doing very, very good at this, I can tell you do the same thing, but I've eliminated how long I worry. Mm. Um, one thing you said here that I've noticed that a lot of the Golden Door Award winners, I put next day mindset, but really what that means is that you're like tunnel vision on just today. Like, hey, cool, yesterday was yesterday. I can't do anything about yesterday, but I can't do everything about today. And uh, once I get done with today, I'm worrying about just tomorrow. You're not worrying about three, four, five weeks out. You're not worrying about two, three, four years out. Not that you don't do that financially, stuff like that, but like, right. like as far as like keeping your energy and your 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 aura higher, your your mindset higher, um, and away from like the negativity of going downwards. Um, you know, we have that next day mindset or today mindset. Um, you know, the Bible says not to worry about tomorrow. Let the work, let let tomorrow's worries worry about itself. Um, and that's a really cool attribute that I see that you have. Uh, appreciate it. I, I do. I do the same thing. I'm not. I'm not too worried about what's going on tomorrow. It's like, yeah, here I am today. Made it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes what it takes. That book. Yeah. Game changer. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Good. Any other? Any other really good books that you rec- you would recommend? Um, sales wise, I would say the Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. Um, great one there. That's one I have like pretty much every guy to start with outside of Atomic Habits and Go Giver. Um, and then, um, think and grow rich. That's the one I first started on, but that I try to have them read like for sales side of it. Cause that you just understand why people buy, right. With the psychology of selling. Um, I have to, maybe go, there's a bunch. I mean, I have 
probably too many to count on my. Oh, you're good. You're good. But yeah, let, let me be more specific. Go-Giver. What's what's the first two or three that you start with with your teams? Yeah, Tommy Cabot's go giver. Tommy Cabot's and go giver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anything John C. Maxwell? Honestly, Little Red Book, book is selling. Huh. Uh, by Jeffrey Gittimer. He's actually. I've never read that one. one. Super good. <laughs> okay. Really. For anyone that's listening to this, it's like audio form or like like video. The Decision by Kevin Hart. It's like huh. a, it's a self help book. It's only on Audible, and it's freaking hilarious. But it'll put dude. You I like seat. him. I like him. It is the yeah. It's 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 a mix of like a little bit of I feel like Urban Meyer mindset with Jocko Willing, but like Kevin Hart. Oh, oh, that's the type of book. It's dude, great. he's good. Well, if you actually like listen to his content, he's like think about it, bro. The dude's made it for this long, and he's funny. But like, there was one on TikTok or whatever reel. Later, a couple of days that he's like, you know, like, no, like hating on him for like Jumanji two or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, they're like, oh yeah, since Jumanji did so well or whatever, like, what did you make on the second Jumanji? And he was like, yeah, twenty thirty. And I'm like, <laughs> is he making twenty thirty thousand dollars? Like, what's he talking about? Like, I don't know how how well. I mean, I don't know the statistics, but I I have just heard that they that the movies didn't do very well or whatever. So, anyways, the, the title looks like that. It's like purple and blue. Yeah, I see, awesome. That's exciting. That's, cool, man. Sounds, sounds great. And then uh, Mindset by Carol Dweck. That Mindset. one. Yeah, because it talks about the... Uh, yeah, Mindset by Carol Dweck. Basically just understanding why a lot of people are kind of in that imposter syndrome. Uh, huh. we'll go to that another time with that. And we'll oh, yeah. We can we can jam yeah. on that, bro. But that, 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 that's the first book, I believe, that studies came out on like how you know to get over that imposter mindset like believing that you're you know whatever the expectation that the world has on you and you're forever trying to live up to that and you're in that imposter state um and how to get out of that basically it's like that book goes over it's really good i love that i appreciate it dude jake you have been an absolute all-star in this uh on this podcast bro you're appreciate you maggie four-time golden door winner because you're you, you already hit it this year Man, how do uh, how do people find you online? Uh, Jake Zimmer official um, Instagram, and then um, same on same on Twitter. Jake Zimmer, yeah. Awesome, cool. And I'll put it. I do have a launching soon, but I have a nonprofit that I started, NFT for Good Foundation, basically helping wow. uh, NFT projects have a charitable side of things to help make a bigger impact with that. And a lot wow. of people that are in that space need tax write-offs. So yep. it just also helps with that because it, it's, uh, it's growing. So. Cool, dude. I really appreciate it. You're killing it. You're a, you're a dude. How many years have you done this, you said? 10? Started, tw- started 2012, yep. Wow. I love that, dude. I love it. All right, Jake. Any last, any final words for the, uh, for the, uh, for the other Golden Door Award winners? Um, say the biggest thing is um, be okay with not being the best at what you're best at. So be okay with sucking at the things you're good at, <laughs> in other words. Because um, there's going to be days where you're not perfect at it. And that, that was a big pivot for me and just, be okay, be okay with it, but just understand that, that use that comparison for good and progress on to the next thing you need to do. I love that. Thank you, dude. Jake Zimmer, I really appreciate you, bro. I'll put all your, uh, you. your social, your socials on the, on, uh, in the, in the links below. So description below. So dude, right. just keep crushing it. Looking forward to seeing you in January. And, uh, I just really, I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Yeah. Michael Lucas, appreciate you. All right, brother.